welcome back everyone to the Ahoy Arena for the LEC Spring Split Final. I am here with Dex Peke. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm feeling pretty... Yeah. I know. The... A second. Yeah, give it up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Game one didn't exactly go your way, but what, did it, what are your thoughts on the series so far? I'm, I'm happy with how we played, but of course the game didn't go out the way we wanted. They had a composition that I feel forced us uh, that we couldn't stall the game because the Sun Atari was getting too strong and we couldn't team fight. So even though I feel like we were playing really good, we had a bit of a handicap in the team comp. So. Yeah, still many games to bounce back and we'll see your players in a few minutes. But when you think about this final, there's so much history even between you and another Spanish owner. But I want to know, what does it mean to you to play this final today? Uh, I mean, for me, this final uh, is really special. Also, for the fact that I haven't been in a final with my team for like two or three years, I don't even remember. 2016. 2016, so you remember better. So it feels great to have made it so far already. Of course, I see the players, I see how motivated they are, and no one even thought that we could make it this far already. And I really believe that we can win, and the players believe it as well, and I'm just happy to be already here on a final. I wanna know, you saw your players during the break, how are they feeling right now? Excited, still motivated? Yeah, I, the, as soon as the game was over, they were still talking about what went wrong, what, do, what they're gonna do better, next thing comp. So they were not down at all. They kept talking as much, and that's great to see. That's amazing to hear. I'll give it out to the casters in a few minutes, but you're a legend in EU. So is there any words you wanna say to this whole crowd who came to see your team play today? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, pretty much. I know a lot of guys here support Fanatics, support G2, support Orion, support many teams. But for me, that I haven't been in an event like this for so long, it just feels great to see you guys again cheering, taking pictures with us. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Becky, and good luck to your boys for Game 2. Now back to the casters for Game 2 of the Grand Final. Thank you very much, Law and Apeke. Welcome back to the stage. We're about to jump into game two picks and bans. Of course, because Origin lost the game, they have side selection, they chose blue sides. Great to hear from X Peke, though. A uh, bit of a legend here in Europe. If you haven't heard of him, he, bit was, of a legend. he used to be quite good at League of Legends. Uh, but it's once again great to hear from him the fact that he is back in the scene. I know which, many fans. Which role was he good at, though? Because, you know, fans have watched <laughs> him a while. <laughs> uh, I, I, I heard I that he was a multi role talent. He's quick shot. Very, not quite as successful as Perks, one might believe. <laughs> perhaps. Uh, perhaps. Well, perhaps. Uh, <laughs> Makes Peke's team can redeem that for Here him. They go. have already made it to the final. Yes, they did falter in game one, but this is a team that often bounces back. And they actually have blue side. This is what we talked about last time round. Uh, and I think that it is really important for them because now they get to dictate the draft. They're the ones that get priority. G2 often have to now force certain bands, uh, things like the Sona perhaps, things uh, like the Rek'Sai as well. Uh, but honestly, I'd love to see Cold get his hands on something like a Rek'Sai so we can go back to see the origin of the end of the regular season where they were actually very active in the early game. And when this team gets a lead, they're actually very effective at snowballing it into a victory. It's also going to completely change the roadmap that G2 have put against Origin. And kind of this extended series of we're now looking at two best of fives between Origin and G2. Origin were on red side every single time, picking it themselves uh, or when Origin also picked blue. So this is actually a, a completely different look than anything G2 have shown before on the competitive stage across Origin. Yeah, it's really difficult for a team like Origin who are exceptionally good when they know what to prepare for, you know, when they can see how their opponents play and they can and draft an answer. They saw how Wanda played on Irelia, and the answer was simple. Get the hell off Irelia. The bands are so very different from the side of Origin this time round. Taking the Varus and Irelia off the board. The Irelia makes sense, but the Varus Frost, definitely a surprise. I think it's actually about the Sona Terex. So again, one of the things that Varus can do is he can apply Grievous Wounds, uh, so you don't necessarily have to itemize the Executioner's Calling to interact with the healing debuff across from Sona Terex. So the fact that they ban the Varus, I don't think that's them saying like, Patrick, no. No, you can no longer play this champion, but it opens up the potential that if they feel that Varus is the counter to Sonaterek, that they can then themselves run it. But I'm so happy to now see the 
Rek'Sai in the hand of Cold. Such a big, important pick for him, and I think it's going to be very valuable to the early game of Origin. And you know how much I love my stats. Cold is undefeated on Rek'Sai. He is 4-0 and zero with a KDA of 13, 3, and 18. G2 Esports with a very quick lock-in of Zyra Khan. And that's a lot of hard engage and a lot of 2v2 dominance down that bot lane. So now it, it, it's crunch time. Does Mithy look towards his Tom Kench? A lot of the times when he does face a lot of hard engage, he will grab this champion and be confident on it? Or are they saying, yes, the Varus is gone, we know. we know exactly what we're doing, we're going to run Sonateric and you will not be able to break us. Oof, let's see if Origin can do to G2 what they did to Fnatic yesterday. But a lot of comfort picks going in the hands of G2 now. The Rise, the thing that can once again be flexed into multiple roles on this team. Often a debate who actually is the best Rise on this team. Uh, but usually you always look at that man in the top lane, Wonder. He's had so many fantastic performances on the Rise. He's already had a great game one today. Uh, G2, I feel, with these comfort picks, already looking very scary. And Wonder really does feel like kind of that intangible secret ingredient to G2. Because again, you expect the, the flex picks to go so many different directions, but it's the fact that Wonder can also play these flex picks to such a high level, almost as well as Caps, if not better, on certain matchups. And when you're doing that with a guy like Caps, again, that's why G2 are so terrifying, where they are such a Goliath. Yeah, and of course, you know, to talk about the impact that that Rise has, for G2 Esports, just a side note, Caps undefeated 2-0, and Wonder 0-1, and Vedius. <laughs> Not reading <laughs> into true. it, we it's jump into true. Phase 2 bands. It is a Jarvan taken away by G2 Esports, the LeBlanc removed by Origin, followed by a Corky. Perhaps Ooh. maybe looking for a Zoe there? Ooh, I, I know the, the Corky ban is telling me something, and I'm like, if they're looking to ban away the Corky, this already suggests to me that they want to put Rise up towards the top lane, or they want to just eliminate some of the safe options that Origin could go for uh, to try and force them into something a little bit more aggressive. So kind of your big blind picks that you have available for Nuke Duck in that mid lane are going to be things like the Zoe, like the Lissandra, um, but Rise and even the LeBlanc could have been a good Ooh. matchup there. Oh, blind pick right now for the side of G2. And I feel like that's a double down. Again, they're eliminating all of these safe blind picks. They're trying to herd Nuke Duck on exactly what they want to face. Yeah, the Lissandra is something that they could look to put him on. I think that in terms of this composition, it works very nicely. We are seeing a bit of a hover right now, but audience, you got to be careful with the hovers until they're locked in. Oh, it gets locked in. We oh, got a Yasuo in the yes. final. Okay, but what does this mean when we look at the composition? Again, it felt like the mind games, like they were trying to force him into Lissandra. We know that they really like that Rise matchup into it, and it would have given Caps the go-ahead for the Rise, but by going for the Yasuo and the Kinnon, it now says... This is a Pike! We got a Pike! Let's go! It's going to be a pike jungle, this could be a pike mid. Oh, they hovered it last game, and I really wanted to talk about it, but because they didn't lock in, we had to move away from it. But we have the pike in this. Wait, that's a smite on perks. I think they might be doing a funnel, ladies and gentlemen. What? How is that going to work with this composition? I mean, it's triple oh support plus word. an ADC. Oh my word, G2. They are pulling out all the stops in game two. They are going crazy with the strats. G2 Esports were dethroned last year by Fnatic, and they picked up caps coming into 2019. It was a reign of dominance for G2 that started here in the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam. And G2 are going Morgana, Pike, and a funnel comp. Okay, now, let's step back. It's been a long time since we have seen funnel comp. No, here's the thing. Everyone, when Perks first made his rotation over to the ADC, everyone's like, ah, funnel. That's not the same thing as actually being a true marksman. He can't just get away with this. There were so many doubters there. But this team is so practiced at a funnel composition, not just from Perks now on the Zaya, but think of how many times Yankos had to play secondary support. I'll have you know that Yankos is the best Braum in Europe, best Braum. if you recall correctly, when he was playing in that role. And of course, it's coming up into this duo of Sona Tarek that needs time to scale and build up. Okay, so uh, it's going to take us some time. This is going to be a learning opportunity for us all, Quick Shot, because getting to see how this comp will work is very new, very novel. Clearly, Perks and Wonder will be the primary carries. Yankos returns to support duty here in the final. But you know what he said? I want a title badly. I will not jungle. I don't need to. Well, look at it this way. If anybody wants to see exactly what Yankos does this game, go check out twitch.tv slash riotgames2. He won the POV vote. He is playing Teleport Flash Morgana. Caps is playing Pike. Your spring split MVP is playing Pike. 
and Perks is running the smite on that Zion. So quick fun story for you. Uh, the moment Pike was released, Caps was already playing at mid lane. It was one of the first things he did with the champion, and actually he inspired a lot of Soliku players to pick up Pike in a solo lane, and it's actually been very prevalent, but it's never really made its way into solo queue. Now what's interesting here is Caps is not playing a solo queue style Pike. He has gone for the Targons. He is clearly going for, I'm going to assist a champion. And right now, he's grouping up with Yanko. So where exactly is this duo going to look? I kind of feel like it's looking at the Morgana Pike. Now we have seen more Pike play globally in other regions down there, and it works exactly how you you would expect Morgana is there for a lot of the lane control, the light lockdown, and then Pike is there to pick up the coins and look for the kill pressure there. And roams as well. Exactly. The cool thing about Morgana, as you already highlighted, is like she's very safe in lane, especially when she gets three points in her tormented soil. She just clears those cast dominions and she's very safe. So what you'll often see is just wave clear in the bot, and then the Pike will look to roam around the map with Mickey and Perks. But ultimately, the long term goal of the funnel is just to get Zaya to a point where she has an experience advantage and a gold advantage because this champion who is so safe and can do so much damage scales so well and then you stack all of these supports on top of her you then just kind of group up around her like a giant cannon and say come fight us we're stronger now you can see notice how perks only took the red buff and then immediately came to the mid lane so still able to get that farm not overcompensating by taking too much in the jungle just now hits level three Okay, so explain to me a little bit more about how the funnel comp works. We have not seen it in a long time, and it has uh, it has some nuances to it. So, Frost, maybe break down some of the basics of what you think G2 are trying to do with this style. Uh, I mean, it's all about how you're going to abuse the mid lane wave. Again, it's kind of finding these windows that as you shove the wave in, since you have an abundance of wave clear on Rakan and Zaya when they are used as a duo, and then in that space that you have, you quickly walk into the jungle and you start to absorb camps. And what's cool here is it's kind of a double uh, or a double-edged sword. The fact that they gave Cold the Rek'Sai, but he doesn't get to just power off. All right, there's an early flash from Perks already, but look at the turnaround damage. Mickey's going low, defensive flash! Mickey survives! First blood pick! Up by Perks. And Origin, they tried to go for the early game play. They hard commit onto executing Mickey and they fail. So Perks picks himself up first blood and this funnel just got even stronger. But you can't blame Cold looking for that play. You know exactly what he wants to do. If he finds that kill, it's a completely different game because if they're going to force the wave forward, it does open them up for uh, the chance to be abused like that, but expertly played from Perks and Mickey. So let's have a look here. There's no vision on Cold right now. He goes in over the wall and he gets a flash knockup. So immediately this looks good, but the quick follow up flash from Perks into a knockup from Mickey is what buys enough time for Perks to obviously reposition and then get all this free damage down onto Cold. And of course, that replay brought to you by Anywhere. Mickey stepping up once again, making sure that his presence is known. Remember, he returns to the stage after the injury that had him benched in week nine once G2 had secured and guaranteed that first place. All eyes going to be on how he and Perks will be duoing up. G2 Esports, 400 gold up, and we get our first glimpse there of Alfari, Alfari versus Wanda. And it's exactly what you want. Again, it's about creating space for the Zaya. She walks into the jungle, she eats up the farm, and you're just getting these small incremental advantages onto Zaya before you feel confident to start picking her up and walking around. Now that he also has the first blood, it speeds that up. Level five now on Perks. Doing extremely well in terms of the funnel. And look, Mickey. He's looking for a roam. Already made his way up towards the top side. Gets a bit of vision down because there is the potential gank up there as well. And this just goes to show G2 compensating for all possible options the Origin have. And that all resolves around Cold. So as long as they can keep track of him, see what he is up to, the number of comeback opportunities are heavily mitigated. Oh. This is so scary. Caps on Pike, Mickey on Rakan. The amount of CC combined before you add the Rune Rhyme Prison is already disgusting. This should just be an easy setup. There's the dash, the knockup, the ghost water dive. And you wonder where Alfari's gone back to Fountain. It wasn't even fair. He never stood a chance. What I think is so incredible about this, though, isn't just the execution of the dive, but look at the rest of the map. There's nothing for Origin to punish. They saw that G2 expended so many resources topside, but there's not like a lane that they can gank. No one was available. Also, I want to talk about a lane we haven't even looked at at all. Yankos has just been farming with his Tormented Shadow. Uh, we, he did have a little bit of help from Caps earlier, but just because there's been action elsewhere, we haven't had a chance to look at this. I mean, Yanko's going to be pretty content in a fairly low-pressure lane. Yeah, Yankos is more than happy to farm away. We talked about how Morgana very safe in lane, uh, and you can't 
I mean, you can dive her, but uh, typically she just wants to sit back and farm, and she's also fine just abandoning uh, resources because the game isn't about the Morgana. The game isn't about Yankos. It's all about perks and ensuring that he gets as much gold as possible. It's also where you're funneling kind of the EXP advantages. It's not just perks now that has the EXP advantage, but because Yankos is being left alone by himself, he's also getting a level advantage over Patrick and Mithy. So it's crazy. Caps, oh man, this is crazy. Caps and Mickey are putting themselves at a disadvantage, but the key champions that are getting stronger can open up so many plays with their ultimates, with their utility, with their power. I, I just, I, I don't know if there is a more creative team playing at this level of League of Legends anywhere else in the world. And G2, they pull off another surprise. Well, Griffin did try in their final, but it didn't work out. Now we see a very quick kill onto Mickey. And remember, something that Frost was just talking a lot about was all the resources are invested into perks and Yankos and Wonder. Caps and Mickey, very low level, very squishy. So while they're roaming, if they get caught, very quick to die. Oh, Caps doesn't manage to connect with the Bone Skewer. Very good flash from Patrick. The Soul Shackles will not be able to do any damage, though. So that was a level six Morg, unable to find the Kill. And that's so important that Origin were able to survive that, because again, that was kind of the big window, the big advantage that G2 had tried to make by exiting Caps and Mickey out of this lane and giving Yankos that advantage. Honestly, I'm very surprised they tried that all in. Caps wasn't level six, didn't have the execute on his ultimate. And a Morgana at level six with only double Dark Seal, not really that much damage. Um, still, they do get the double flashes out from the Origin bot lane. It could be a lane that they look to dive later with the Rakan and the uh, Zaya. But the big problem I'm seeing right now for G2 is that this Rakan is going to take a long time to get to that level 6 mark. That primary engage tool that G2 are going to be relying on will take a long time to get there. So in the meantime, Origin, they're still farming up. And if you look at the levels across the board, they're all hitting those level 6 points. Okay, so to uh, Sona Tarek, we know this does very well in the team fights. I like the combinations of Kanan, Yasuo, or Rek'Sai. And I also know that Funnel does very well at getting into the mid to later stages of the game. So as we start projecting forward for the next 10 or 15 minutes, does either of these teams have a you know a, a ticking timeout to make those first plays? I mean, for me, it's about the side lane. Again, if everything's going to be kind of centered around this Zaya, we really need to pay attention if Wonder is able to hold the lane assignments once this map starts opening up. Because you are looking at Origins comp with the Kennen as well as the Yasuo. And speaking of Kennen, Oh, there we go. Cold. Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted to see Cold step up. You wanted to see Cold have an impact in the early game for us, Urin. And on his undefeated Rek'Sai, 1-1-1. One, one, one and one. But hold on, look at the sharks. They're surrounding the water. They smell it. Oh, here comes Caps. Waiting to see the CC. Alfari has used absolutely everything. Does get taken out. And of course, the room prison onto Cold. So there's an instant reply. Teleport is now being thrown down. I think Wanda should be joining the fray. And this will be a couple extra plates secured. No, oh, poor Alfari. It feels like that he doesn't get anything in these games. All of the attention goes on to trying to shut him down. And even though Origin find a good kill onto Wanda, G2 immediately answer back. And again, this is one of the scary things about this roaming duo of Perks and Mickey. They're not, they're not limited to a single lane. They can move wherever they want. They have a lot of mobility. And because they have the smite, they can even steal away those jungle camps. And it's the fact that champions like Rakan and Pike, even not having access to their ultimates, have so much mobility and that utility that you're talking about to create plays like that. Also notice how Yankos moved away from bot into mid to hold the lane against the Asuo, and they actually just conceded some turret plates to the Sona and Tarek lane. This will be one of the uh, biggest gold uh, investments that we've seen for a Sona Tarek lane really anywhere. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's it's because G2 are getting so many advantages it, elsewhere. It's really an investment if G2 just left the lane. I guess it counts well, as a I donation, guess, uh, I suppose. I guess that's a better descriptor, yeah. Well, look, Origin, because they were donated lane priority down bottom, they're able to group up and take the first Infernal Drake. But it is at the cost of a lot of gold. G2 Esports will just about secure this tower if Wanda sticks around. He's backed away because Nuketuck arrived just in the nick of time. Nuketuck has got himself as Berserker's Greaves, also starting to itemize up. And it kind of feels like both teams are getting what they want. Origin, again, very strong team fighting, but the Infernal is going to help them as this game scale scales later on, whereas G2 really needed Wonder to be competitive in a side lane. And now we are setting up for a potential oh, dive. Oh no, Mithy and Patrick, they need to use the Cosmic Radiance flawlessly. That's going to be the time and just in time. Yes. All right, Mithy got the flash, crescendo by some time, but instantly killed. 
Biancos gets his first of the game. 1-0-0 on that Morgana. More plates falling in favor of G2. It's a thousand gold lead and OG just had no response. Ooh, looks like Caps is going in. Oh, the Flash Ghost Water died. Look at that damage. Mickey almost goes out, but simply not enough. Cold unable to chase, but is there a buy? Alfari's chasing, he's got no Flash available. Slicing Maelstrom's a second or two away. I think that's on cooldown, not able to chase. And Alfari decides not or cannot get in. And it looks like Origin are just being run around the map. G2 grouping up as this four-man unit. Even with the ultimate from Tarek, there is so much single target CC that Tarek was able to use the ultimate. The ultimate landed on him, it then ran out, and then he died. That is how much single target CC this G2 squad has. And if you get caught out, you're not escaping. And again, just the ability to lair it as well, because as soon as he came out of all of that, he just knocked straight up into the air by Mickey holding the knock up. So here, we can see the collapse coming in from G2. They pushed in mid with the duo, and they start making their way down. Mickey holds the ultimate. This is good, you don't need to use it yet, but first gets knocked back in with the uh, root from Yankos. Then you have the binding. You also have the feathers here. You have the charm knock up. And then you have the Execute from Caps just to round things out, even though he didn't need it. Unbelievable. And then, of course, Caps goes in for the re-engage on the secondary tower. Imagine you use the ultimate there, not the flash, as I called first time around. Oh, beautifully done from G2. These dives have been absolutely exquisite. They've lost nothing for it. I just feel like G2 are so determined to make sure that Perks isn't the only guy role swapping on the team. This composition, <laughs> like, everywhere, you get to play support. You can play support. <laughs> and just look at the gold as well. Even though uh, OG have had Nuke Duck sitting in a solo lane, they still have three of their main carries, all with the highest amount of gold in this game. Wonder and Perks have been doing exceptionally well. Yankos in the 1v2. Arguably against Asona Tarek is not that impressive, but he's still holding his own. Yeah. Uh, and G2, like, you can see they came in very prepared with this strategy. And kind of focusing in on the Morgana build path is, I'll hold it for a second because here comes Caps. All right, here he comes. Bone Skewer out, Bone Skewer in. Alfari's in trouble. Soul check as well do sometimes. Slicing Milestone will do a little bit. Caps gets the dunk. Now on the back end, Perks, he manages to pick up his 200th kill in playoffs. Now Origin are running for their lives. Perks isn't done yet. Looking to re-engage. Dark Binding won't find a target as Patrick and Mithy are running. The Crescendo did a lot of work. Cosmic Radius may not be used just yet, and it's not available. Not going to work out, and Patrick and Mithy are now in trouble. Mithy caught, stunned up. I'm waiting to see if Caps can find the Bone Skewer. Lure in prison, just missing, just going wide. Wanda takes a little bit of damage from Patrick, throwing out the overloads onto the overloads! Wanda finds yet another kill. It's a 5,000 gold lead. And G2 are just snowballing this game. They find another successful fight up towards the top side of the map. And now they lead with nine kills. And it just feels like G2 are running at a breakneck pace and Origin are just too slow to react. There's too many things happening across the map for them to do anything. And G2 are winning at every single point. It's absolutely insane. This composition is crazy from the side of G2. Like. We always talk about win conditions and like objective and, and how you look to win a game, but against G2, it feels like there's never any answers. Win conditions go out the window and they just throw everything on the table. And you know, when I was looking at the composition, I was just about to, to point out Morgana's build path by going for the GLP. You know, it's kind of that new Morgana. It's not about flashing forward and using the ultimate and the hourglass. It's about kind of kiting back, letting them try to kite into you and then slowing them down with the hose. And when you have the kite back of Morgana, it's so hard to run into a Zaya. It's so hard to run into a Rise. I was like, oh, how are you ever going to attack G2's composition 5v5? But the thing is, is they're just sprinting at everyone with double mobility boots. Oh, Wanda almost picks up a kill here in a 1v3. Cross going in such a difficult situation. All right, there comes the Unbar from Cole. Got him. Just to at least get one. That was a four on one. Now Nuke Duck is in trouble. He will get taken out by Perks. The Feathers out, the Feathers back, and they pick up one. Now Caps looking for the Bone Skewer. Going to use the dive to escape. The re-engage. Mickey goes down with the quickness. Slicing Maelstrom, simply not enough. Alfari is dead, and it is a top lane schooling, as Wonder has way more impact than Alfari. And Origin are trying to get down and dirty with G2. They're trying to step to meet them in these skirmishes, but they are just getting outclassed right now. I barely have enough time to breathe. Imagine what Origin have to be doing on this stage. Coming up against this type of funnel composition. Now there's a lot of damage under caps. The crescendo comes down from Patrick, but there's no follow-up. There's nothing more to do. G2 get yet another. 5-0-5.
Perks is on our rampage, and he is destroying Origin. 6,000 gold up at 15 minutes, Vedius. G2 are looking for another title. And the, the funny thing about it is, at the end of last game, we talked about how OG just want to try and get something more standard. They want to try and have more normal lanes so that they can just play standard League of Legends, because that's where they have the most success. And G2 just went, nah. We're just going to throw everything that we can. We're going to create the craziest comp. And this is just another example where they're even making these insane plays, like Wonder going in 1v3, thinking you can find this kill. And originally you think, OK, this is the first overconfident mistake from G2. But while that's going on, Nuketik is getting caught. And again, you're still dealing with all of the experience lead and cold lead that G2 have their composition. I love the points that you bring up about standard play. Again, Origin are a team that need to prepare for their opponent. They need to sculpt these team fight or sculpt these compositions that they know exactly how to counter your play style. How can you ever see this coming? What are you supposed to do? <laughs> There's no answer to that, Froskurin. And for Origin, down this game, it feels like it's done so. It feels like they are too far behind. You have to admit they have scaling with the uh, team fight. And you have to admit that one does 97% of the vote for POV stream is a big part of why G2 are winning. I think the only person who's truly donezo for Origin right now is Alfari. Playing a side lane is just a pipe dream at this point for the Kennen. He's like, please give me any type of table scrap that I can find. And he's mainly playing for the 5v5. This is the, the flanking Kennen. Get me some assists. Get me back into this game. Find me some free AXP. Because if any one of G2's members find him, he will be popped. I mean, he's going to, and there's not a lot of tools like you mentioned. Uh, Frosk, I've got a question for you, which I'll get to once we see if G2 decide to push. Yankos is down in the bottom lane. Uh, he's going to get helped out now by Caps. As we see the tower being taken up in the top lane. There's a little bit BM with that vote on top of it. Now the tower falls in the mid. The tower falls in the bot. Perks, Wonder, and Yankos significantly ahead of their opposing team members. And I'm going to go back to something you've said a lot this split, Froskurin that certain players on certain champions, they play that limit League of Legends, you know, playing on the absolute edge of safety and, and recklessness. Yeah. Is G2 that as a team as well? Because they've got it individually on the champions, but when you see this, you know, Sona Tarek in the previous game and now Funnel in this one, is it fair? I mean, the idea is is that, and a lot of the players will throw down the term lim uh, limit League of Legends. It's that you're, you're playing to the champion to the maximum capacity and any situation, you know, G2 look at a 50-50 situation, they say, no, 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 we are the 51%. We will take it every single time because we are just better players than you. And continuously, they prove that. I think what's just super impressive about G2 is the fact that they constantly come up with new things as well. You know, over in... Ooh, caps. He senses it. His yeah. spidey senses are tingling. Oh, Twin man. Shadows. Look at the ghost. Spooky, spooky ghost. Actually, interrupt. But uh, one of the things that impresses me so much is when we when we think about Griffin over in the LCK, uh, in their filing against SKT, they brought out the Pantheon Talia bot lane, right? Something that showed up a couple times over in Korea, and they tried it. That innovation. Griffin was almost like the uh, LCK equivalent to what we have here in G2. And the thing about G2 is, like, they never stop with their innovation either. They always come with something new. Um, but somehow they always make it work. They, they find these creative ways of bringing out something interesting and dynamic and crazy, uh, and yet still they make it work. And, like, the strange thing is, Origin isn't a bad team. We saw what they did to Fnatic yesterday. Yet G2 is making them look so weak in comparison. And, like, that just goes to show how strong G2 is a team. The delta between G2 and the rest of the field is gigantic, is yeah. what it feels like. Now, Origin, of course, they are down 8k. They have... Do not ask me how they bounce back, because I don't to. know I'm, quick I'm, I'm not going to. I just to. don't know. Look, at the end of the day, this this game is so much in G2 server. 20 minutes, 8,000 gold lead, 13 kills to three, five towers to one. Like, the only advantage, of, they got an infernal Drake. Like, that's, that's it. That's simply not good enough to win this game. But what a difficult situation to be in for Origin coming up against this cop. I mean, technically, you have Nukeduck still on a champion like yes. Yasuo. He's yes. looking for some breakpoints in terms of the itemization. Like, Sona Tarek's only going to get better as the game goes on. But it's just, can they survive to that point? Because you should be in full turtle mode as Origin. You kind of see them constantly group up towards their base, and then they kind of look at each other like, OK, the waves have pushed in. We're safe enough to look for some plays. And then they quickly reach out and grab the farm. The problem was is that they were able to do that before the Baron spawn. So they've had like a three minute window to safely grab uh, safely grab farm. Now that the Baron is there, you see G2 just immediately
immediately run to it and say, okay, we're ready, boys. Come and fight us. Here we go. Well, OG are going to answer with the fight. This is the last ditch effort that they have in order to keep this game alive. All right, 20 minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Origin looking to engage. I believe that might be the quickest. We're going to confirm with stats. Look at the re-engage. Cosmic Rain to buy some time. Slicing Monster does so much damage. Imagine if Origin were not 8,000 gold down. They've got themselves a one for one. Here's the re-engage. Mythi gets chunked out. The knock-up and the dash away from Mickey. Now Wonders are going to run down the rest of the team. Mythi gets blocked. The shield from Wanda. The dive from Caps. And now Cole is the last member standing. G2 Esports get Baron and three kills. And again, I just think to myself, what if the early game had not gone the way that it did? And that was so important why they needed to get Wonder ahead of Alfari. They needed that secondary damage healer when they have a team composition of triple support alongside Zaya. Like you said, imagine if Origin weren't 8k down there for that fight. Wow, well, not going to be the case. Cold almost kills Mickey. He takes G2 Esports on a wild goose chase. Caps 5-0 and 6 gets the kill secure, extends that gold lead even further, and Frost Gurren, the last ditch effort to get back in here, feels that good. This should be G2 going to one. And honestly, that fight looked pretty promising for Origin at the start. It felt like the fact that G2 were locked in that pit, uh, and then they used a lot of their mobility skills to actually split apart, and the, oh, this actually looks pretty good for Origin, maybe they can really win this, but as you said, Frost, the damage just wasn't quite there from the side of Origin. So good ultimate from Mithy actually protects a lot of the members. Then a great ulti onto the backline from Alfari. And you think, okay, this is great. But Yanko's buying time with the Morgana against four. Uh, and then they dive in. Mithy flashes in. But then this is where Caps and Wonder comes into fruition. He flashes onto the back line, he melts through them, rides surprisingly tanky, always catches people off guard, and then the rest of G2 can come to help support him and swing the fight into an eventual lace. And again, that mobility coming from Pike, but he can just somersault back over the Baron pit. It's just so difficult. And it's, you know, it is beautiful to watch. G2 Esports now looking to finish out this game. They've got themselves pressure in multiple lanes. Wonders down bottom, and the rest of the squad now looking to join him. But also think about the statement that this makes to the rest of the world as well. G2, they want to go to the international events. They want to compete around the world, and they're saying, we're ready to bring out everything in this final to secure it. I love that thought. What a statement. Hey, we're waiting to play uh, Final Cop if it makes sense. And of course, that is one of the benefits of winning this split. They will advance to MSI. G2 Esports have got themselves an inhibitor. We're halfway to another victory. Maybe more, if you actually think about it that way. 12k gold up and Origin. They've got to be thinking and talking. How do we play against this comp? How do we handle Sona Tarek? How do we go into the next draft? So step one, I think, for this game still, yes. is that you are looking for that, that big wombo combo. You still did feel good that, okay, if we weren't so far behind, if we had just played the team fight slightly different, we did make a lot of ground there. So you need to clear out your, your jungle, you need to clear out these uh, wards, and again, get to these, these farm lanes and try to turtle. But getting caught here, that would be devastating. Oh, uh, here comes Wind Up. Round Warp will come in, and Cole does go down. Former teammates killing one another. Okay, I tried to find the silver lining. Throw it out. You can't get away from the these guys, they're too fast. That's it, G2's glass is full, Origins is empty, there is no silver lining here. G2 Esports. They're just gonna dive on. They are going to dive. Cosmic Radiance is thrown down by Mithy. There's some sort of engage, but look how far he just gets Rune Prison in place. He simply cannot get past. The quickness used by Mickey in the dash, in the dash out. Now that's good damage from Nuketuck, but again, there's simply too much to fight through. There's the knockout knockdown, and it is simply too easy for G2 Esports. Now Patrick will be the last man standing before he gets aced by G2. And I have a quick stat for you. When G2 Esports ran Funnel Comms in summer of 2018, they went undefeated 5-0. and oh. In the finals of spring, they are looking to continue that streak 6-0. and zero. At 24 and a half minutes, G2 Esports funnel their way to victory. What a convincing victory from G2 as they look to lead the series 2-0. Beautiful stuff from this G2 Esports squad. The smile on Yangos' face. He was the POV stream he played Morgana that game. G2 were impeccable. They also secured the quickest Baron of the spring splits.
and it's just a stylistic mismatch here. It feels like G2 are just Origins Kryptonite, a team that is all about preparation, that is all about controlled, slow, methodical play. G2, they don't necessarily need these crazy creative picks. They have them, but they can also just be so crazy and creative and problem solve on the spot in a game. They are so hard to pin down. They can morph into any form that they need to be. So Betty, if you were to put yourself in Origin's shoes... Oh, great, let's do that. <laughs> I mean, how do you respond to that? Because we already had the question of Tarek Sona coming into the series. Now G2 have thrown Pike Morgana Funnel into the equation as well. <laughs> it was difficult enough already. Oh, I don't know. I, I What are you banned in yeah. this game? Like, uh... I mean, that's the thing. We were like, okay, Origin, they need to get called on an agency jungler. You know, we love the Rek'Sai. Yeah, he was undefeated on it. Boom, they like got Origin it. did everything that we wanted them to do, right? And it didn't matter. It did. <laughs> and if you guys are sitting at home, get your friends and family, because who knows what the hell G2 are going to do next. Did, yeah. they need, did they need the funnel comp to win this game? That's a question I'm going to ask them later, right? Because maybe this was their answer to Tarek Sona. I think it was. Did they do it That's to why I think did it they was. Do it to start? Like, is this the souped up version of Blitzcrank from yesterday? I mean, I legitimately think this is their answer to the Sona Tarek lane. Because I the fact it. that you can't play around bot side of the map kind of it means that you know where the jungle is going to be. I tell you what. Good luck, Shocks and Analyst Desk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We've got this, okay? Guys, how sick is G2 Esports right now? Holy moly. It is insane. Like, I'm already thinking ahead. I'm thinking MSI, I'm thinking G2 take it all, because <laughs> they are showing us some insane things. Yeah, me and Yamato literally looked at each other when they did that tower dive top lane, when Caps roamed at level 3 or something, like, Oh no, this team is actually just leagues ahead of everyone else we see here in Europe. And watching them, you know, try to prove it here, finish it out, and then go on international, I just can't wait to see it. Yeah, uh, so before we get there, let's ask Quickshot asked us so kindly, break down what was going on here. The picks and bangs were, <laughs> bands were absolutely bonkers. I want you to make, uh, yeah, tell me the method behind the madness, what is going on? Well, starting it off, I actually think that G2 baited OG into picking the Sona Tarek. They first rotation Zyra Khan, which is not something we've seen a lot from them. And I think they were already planning like, hey, if they take the Sona Tarek, we're just leaving it up for them. We have this funnel strategy prepared to beat it. I think the biggest reason why the funnel strategy works so well against the Sona Tarek is because the Morgana can practically lane alone against the Sona Tarek. And the biggest problem when you face a Sona Tarek is the fact that you need to have this constant kind of rain and barrage of damage. And when you're playing Funnel, there's only one guy that's going to make big damage, unless you're G2. Then you have Wonder as well, shooting cannons with Rise. So looking at the whole team composition, the Tarek cool doesn't matter because Zaya doesn't really use any big cooldowns. She just keeps auto-attacking. And I think it was a fantastic response uh, to the Sona Tarek. I completely agree. So then, there, we saw it again, Funnel. Now, of course, if we think back to 2018, Funnel was all the rage. G2 played it very well. <laughs> Yankos was on brown duty all the time. Ender, take us back to how that worked and tell us how it's different if at all from what we saw here from G2. Yeah G2 was the best funnel team in 2018 by the way and back then there it was just so good because there was no cap there was no punishment for doing it but when we saw Could it Could you it break it down out, in simple terms what yeah. was it what is funnel? Oh, yeah the idea is that you take smite on an AD carry like champion you roam around the jungle with your support and you don't have a true mid laner. The idea is you farm your camps and walk mid lane every single time the minions are going to be pushed in your tower to die. What this does is it super feeds your AD carry. Your support that's walking around with them is going to be pretty low level, but your ADC is going to hit item breakpoints very, very quickly and try to steamroll the game off of major uh, completions. And to take a trip down memory lane, the counter always to funnel was to pressure the side lanes. That's why the Sona Tiger is so weak. You don't pressure anything there. And at the same time, the, the approach you can take is to win the 2v2 in the mid lane, which you tried early, and it didn't pay off. And if you fall behind against the funnel, you don't get back because they're just farming more than you and all that money is on one person. So uh, if I'm correct here, you were of course on the on the balance team as well, on the playtest team rather, and there were active steps taken to avoid this funnel strategy from working. Right. What were those and how is it that G2 can just play it here today? Yeah, so uh, back in the middle of the summer split, it was introduced, it was called the, the Monster Hunter uh, debuff, which basically meant back in the day, if you had the highest minion score on your team with a jungle item, you were going to get 10 less gold per lane minion that you killed. 
Now, in the preseason that was removed, they realized, okay, funnel is back, and it was put back in a little bit different. Now, the way it works is that if your gold from minions is greater than half your gold of monsters, then you get that 10 less reduction up until you complete your jungle item. So what this means yeah. is that perks, <laughs> it's a lot to follow along with, no, no, but bear I'm with me. There. What this means is that when you get something like the first blood in the mid lane, like Yamato mentioned, you're super fed into finishing your warrior. Once you finish warrior, you no longer get the reductions and continue to farm minions so well. And I think that brings us back to this game then, because also normally funnel, you gotta wait for it. You know, you gotta invest the resources in it and wait until your AD carry can rank up. This wasn't the case because G2 got into fights, they got kills, and it could just funnel so much better. Yeah. This gives me flashbacks. This gives me flashbacks of screaming when funnel was the thing. It was always if the funnel gets ahead, all of a sudden the game is so rough Over, because yeah. it just pressured the whole map. It transferred the pressure. You can't pressure the side lanes. They managed to get one kill on Rise, but beyond that, yeah, really. there's not much. And and the problem is that you never win a single fight where the funneled player is in. You always lose it unless you can immediately burst them at the start. That would be the answer. But you see Sonatark in bot lane, that's all about playing back in team fights, not about diving in and trying to assassinate someone like Desire. And because of all the action, it did turn into an incredibly one-sided game for G2 Esports once again. We're just trying to build up the tension before you see us <laughs> again, guys. Chill, all planned. Uh, <laughs> now, I do want to kind of parlay this. <laughs> <laughs> parlay this into a bigger conversation of something we just touched on. And I think it's always difficult because they are still in this best of five and we cannot count OG out. But I want to call up Ocelot's tweet, who tweeted during this game, G2 Esports can play whatever the F they want. Do you guys agree? Because it definitely looks like there is nothing to do for OG in this series. Yeah, I mean, Caps played support that game. The best player in the league was on Pike support while his jungler was playing Morgana. Yes, they can play whatever they want. And what does that mean? I think the stats team is probably enjoying that one with the <laughs> minion deficits and all that's going on. But I think looking into the future, like even looking into the next game that's going to happen, yeah. what the hell do you do? Do you ban the funnel? Do you think about how you play into funnel? Do you tap into the old roots? There's so much that you need to kind of digest between two games, and it's incredibly difficult already now in this series to adapt. Also, uh, you know, it's just incredible that G2, with the power they have on every single one of these players, no sweat, completely another gear, completely a different, a different game plan, a different strategy with a lot of nuances, and it doesn't matter. They just shift gears so, so easily. Yeah, it's really easy for them, and it just, they play so well on an individual level. They win all of their matchups, but then also as a team, you can see them coordinating plays around the map. Whether it's both supports roaming top lane to get the dive off or making these plays on the sides, it really is impressive to watch from this team. I think what we're looking at here, if we look at G2 and their gameplay, I feel like this could potentially be the best European roster of all time. I'm just gonna let it breathe because it is a very weighty uh, statement. There's a lot connected to that, right? Because you're saying that before they lift the trophy, I don't think there's a doubt in your mind that they will. Before they go to international competition, because in the vacuum of you, of course, it looks fantastic. And that's all they have in front of them right now. But we are starting to think about MSI, of course, and about what they could do. And I'm gonna put you on the spot. Yamato, you said I would bet anything on it. G2 Esports is going to win MSI. So we have SKT, China is JDG versus IG the final. I think it's possible, very right. possible. Uh, I'm gonna stop right there because the series is not over. So we have to get in the minds of Origin. We have to get in the minds of the people who have played an incredible split so far, who went to second place in the regular season, who beat Fnatic, who had creative strategies, who had clutch decision-making, who had a lot of good elements. How do they tap into that to bring this series back starting in game three? I think it starts with the Sona Tarek. I do not want to see them return to that pick. On blue side, you have the option to ban the Sona and stop G2 from playing it, but I think you're actually fine leaving it open and trying to return to something like the Blitzcrank in the bottom lane. I don't want to see them play the slow game against G2. When Origin beat G2 in the regular season, it was with counter pick on Nuke Duck and very strong proactive early game play making. It all needs to change for Origin. They must completely reapproach how they want to go against G2. I think we're going to see a very similar draft. We want to see the strong jungler on cold, and then afterwards, when the Zyra Khan comes in, just draft a lane that's good into it. Let's see some Morgana, some Tom Kenjin. Let's Let us see a standard game where they can go back to their strengths, 
and just remove the Sona Tarek from the equation and let's just try game one again. Yeah, and for everyone here, hopefully give us a couple of more games. Uh, three years ago on this stage, G2 Esports with Kikis, Trick, Perks, Emperor and Hybrid lifted the first trophy ever for the G2 organization. Right now, the G2 of Wonder, of Yankos, of Caps, of Perks and of Mickey X are on match point to start that new era of G2 Esports. They are looking unstoppable so far against Origin. Find out if they can take the trophy right after this. It would have given Caps the go-ahead for the rise, but by going for the Yasuo and the Kinnon, it now says... This is a Pike! We got Pike, let's go! All right, there's an early flash from Perks already, but look at the turnaround damage. Mickey's going low, defensive flash! Mickey survives! This should just be an easy setup. There's the dash, the knock-up, the ghost water dive. Lure in prison, just missing, just going wide. Wonder takes a little bit of damage from Patrick, throwing out the overloads onto the overload! Look, 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 Alexa, 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 bind him, bind him, bind him, bind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mithy gets chunked out. The knock-up and the dash away from Mickey. Now Wonder's looking to run down the rest of the team. Mithy gets caught. The shield from Wanda at 24 and a half minutes. G2 Esports funnel their way to victory. Hercules, I have been expecting you. <laughs> and I brought you a gift so you can fight properly. Red Bull. Ooh, how nice of you, but also rather foolish. Mm. My, my, no, my, no, my, no, my, 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 uh -oh. my. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings.